In the last lesson, we learned about the concept of a limiting reagent. Watch that video first if you have not seen it yet. At least one quarter to one third of any typical college general chemistry course is about stoichiometry. Mastering stoichiometry is very important. Many students don't realize that when we are talking about reactions and solutions or the gas law or even thermochemistry, we are actually just dealing with different variants of the same kind of stoichiometric calculations. In stoichiometry, since we either count molecules or count them by moles, we have to convert everything to moles first before we start. Whether your reactant is a solid, liquid, gas, or a solution, you always compute the number of moles first. To calculate the number of moles, it depends on what physical state your reactant is in, because there are different ways of measuring out gases, solutions, solids, or liquid. For a solid or a liquid, the most common measurement is by mass. Because each molecule has exactly the same mass, if you're given, say, one gram of the compound, you can figure out exactly how many molecules you have. Or if you know the mass of each mole of your reactant, you can figure out exactly how many moles you have from the mass. The mass of one mole of a compound is called its molar mass, or the molecular weight. The molar mass of a compound can be computed from its constituent atoms. The video solutions has many examples of this. For a liquid, you will sometimes measure it by volume. You cannot compute the number of moles directly from the volume alone. You will need to know its density and convert volume to mass first. Mass is equal to density multiplied by volume. If your reactant is in the solution, you will need to know both the volume of the solution and its concentration to calculate the number of moles. Moles is equal to volume in liters multiplied by concentration in molar. Finally, if your reactant is a gas, you can use the ideal gas law to calculate moles. Moles equal to PV over RT. So you will need pressure, volume, and temperature of a gas to compute moles. Once you have the balanced equation and the number of moles of all the reactants, you can set up the stoichiometric calculation just like we have shown you in the last lesson. After you have the moles of the reactants, every stoichiometry calculation proceeds the same way. Watch the, la the last video lesson to learn how to determine the limiting reagent.